Good morning, everybody. Mark Fine in here in the Home Weather Office. It is Tuesday morning. It's now the 26th day of August, 2025, and this is the morning briefing. As I look out the window from the Home Weather Office this morning, a nice morning. We have blue sky, but also some clouds, and those clouds are alto cumulus clouds. Alto Q in the valley at this hour usually means that we've got the monsoon going and yeah, there is the chance of some showers and we're going to show you the radar in just a second because some areas are seeing some rain even this morning and we are expecting more thunderstorms this afternoon. But before I get to all of that, I do want to just point out that according to YouTube, this that I'm recording right now is the 600th <laughs> video that I've done for YouTube since I started this about two and a half years ago. So yeah, big weather, big day here at the weather office, so the home weather office. Uh, caterers are on the way, We're having a big, the entire staff is, is coming in today. It's gonna be a, a, a big blowout. Anyway, let's press on with the weather today. Here is how it looks on the, the radar. So interesting the way radar uh, look, so this is off, off the Davis radar. This is ground clutter here. These are actual showers in Stanislaus County and into Tuolumne County and especially farther to the south where this is a special weather statement. Kind of looks like a severe thunderstorm warning, but it is not. And then you go farther to the north and we have scattered showers showing up on the radar here in parts of Butte County as well as into Calusa County. So I say I'm looking at the Davis radar. Uh, let's look, see how it looks like from the Beal radar. A lot of ground clutter mixed in, um, but still you see this activity down here. Let's take a look from the Reno radar. It looks even different. So the difference is that from here, uh, the Davis radar, or any, any radar you're looking at, it's it, what you're looking at here is a lot of elevated convection. Some of this is actually reaching the ground, most likely. Um, but the problem is that when you are, let me go back to this. So this is highlighting exactly where the radar is. So by the time you're getting up to here, you're shooting into the clouds. You're not exactly shooting down at the ground um, to see how much of this is actually reaching the ground. And that's why if we go to the Beale radar, let's take a look. Yeah, there is some activity in here. So this is likely reaching the ground here. Uh, and then if we look at that same area from the Reno radar, it looks a lot more enhanced. And that's why sometimes when you look at um, it, quite often your, your phone app, I use a radar scope, that's what we're looking at here. And that's the way you look at the individual radars here. Um, but it's quite often your phone app will be a composite uh, radar. Uh, and that's what a lot of television stations use too, is it's a composite radar. And so the composite radar is going to use it's going to use this radar, it's going to use this radar, it's going to use this radar, and so it may tend to overpaint things because, well, let's take a look at the one from Monterey, also showing a fair amount of activity here and there, some of which may not be reaching the ground as I'm showing you here. Either way, really interesting morning as the monsoon is in, um, in full swing. Let's put this into motion, and this will take just a second to load up, and you'll see that over the last couple of hours, this activity here starts to move down to the south. And this activity is kind of holding steady. Let's go to the satellite. Beautiful looking satellite this morning. We have abundant monsoonal moisture. Man, the monsoon is just in full swing right now. I saw a post from some guy yesterday saying, oh, it's a late season monsoon. No, we are in the heart of monsoon season. Uh, some people. Anyway, um, this is perfect. And if you uh, are like me and you saw uh, any of the video from yesterday, man, nice dust storm went through uh, Phoenix yesterday. Haboob. And yeah, just just fantastic. Lots of moisture in here. Um, now, this, this is producing rain. And in some areas in the West, it is very beneficial rain. Although, you know, you can see some momentary flash flooding. Now here, as I zoom in, I said zoom in. These are the alto cumulus that we're seeing, and this is where you're seeing those little showers pop up here and there, these little guys in here. But this is, this is alto Q as opposed to those high thin clouds, and the alto Q is what I'm seeing out, out of the, the office window. 
We have, uh, there's Lake Tahoe. Um, looks a little bit hazy, but all in all, the fires that started a couple of days ago from lightning really aren't quote-unquote raging, but there are some fires going on at the south. I'm not going to cover much in the way of fires today because we're talking more about showers and thunderstorms. So with that, let's go and take a look at a couple of different models. I'm going to start here with the HRRR. This is the 12Z HRRR, high resolution rapid refresh. And as we go through the morning, it shows this activity here. What time is this exactly? This is 19Z, so this is uh, at noontime today. This model is showing what would be a thunderstorm in, let's say, around uh, Folsom, El Dorado Hills, Placerville, up toward uh, Pioneer, and then this one, which would extend all the way up toward Bear Valley, and maybe sprinkle into Napa County. Uh, so that's at, that's at noontime today. Let me look. Let me just go over here. See if this has lightning with it. Yes. So this shows that there would be lightning with that. Not a lot, but some. Okay. Let's go back to the precipitation and see how that's going to advance through the afternoon. Okay. So again, we're this is just a noon snapshot that I'm showing you here from the HRRR. Doesn't mean it's right, and I'll show you the NAM nest here in a second. Notice this activity uh, increases as we get into the afternoon. This is 21Z, so this is at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Once again, El Dorado, Amador County, and then the other showers popping up in the higher elevations like we have seen so much of over the last couple of days. And then as we head into the late afternoon and early evening hours, once again, we have more of the activity in Plumas County, Lassen County, Modoc, and then down into the Tahoe Basin. That's today, and then for the day tomorrow, as the pattern shifts, you'll notice that all of the activity tomorrow is on the east side of the Sierra, likely even east of Tahoe, but uh, certainly was still some activity in the eastern part of Lassen County, and then, then, then down 395, but including the high country of Yosemite. Yeah, again, for those of you that are climbing Half Dome or plan to, do keep in mind that uh, afternoon thunderstorms are not the friend of climbers of Half Dome. All right, so that was just the way the HRRR shows it. What about the NAM nest? So this is the high resolution version of the NAM. Also the 12Z run. Picking up on a lot less activity. This is, this is at uh, one o'clock in the afternoon. Picking up a couple of sprinkles here and there. And then into the afternoon, we get more of the east side of the Sierra activity. So that's a big difference between the HRRR and the, and the NAM Nest. And recently, the NAM Nest has been doing much better than the HRRR. However, one thing that I don't like is I'm recording this around 8 o'clock in the morning, and this is the way the NAM Nest shows 8 o'clock in the morning. And, well, this is actually what's going on at 8 o'clock in the morning. We do have some showers up in here. Let's go over to the... Um, the NAM nest. I'll back this up to 8 o'clock in the morning. Should be right in here. It too is pretty quiet. So they're, they're not initialized all that well. However, the HRRR does pick up on more activity as we go through the next few hours. So this is going to be interesting. Um, and one other thing, you know, you, your, your natural question should be, well, which one's right? The problem with um, what are relatively small scale features like this is they're very tough to model. You know, you're, so you're trying to pick up exactly where a thunderstorm is going to be. And even though the HRRR is showing this, what I'm showing you is the simulated reflectivity. It doesn't necessarily mean that any of that is actually going to get to the ground. Although as you go up in elevation, you have a better chance of rain actually reaching the ground in the lower elevations, there's more of the atmosphere to go through that is still relatively dry, so you get more evaporation, you get more virga. So, don't know which one is right. I'm just saying that for small scale features like this, it is very difficult to, to forecast, you know, down to a couple of miles. And I know that there are a lot of apps saying, oh yeah, we can forecast the weather down to your neighborhood near street. Well, they can forecast it. Maybe they just can't forecast it correctly. 
Anyway, so uh, talking about small scale features, now let's talk about big scale features, and that's what we look at here with the, the GFS. Kind of an interesting pattern here going on. So you have kind of this baggy trough pattern, and then you have the monsoon here. You see all these wind arrows going this way, and embedded in that, there are these little lows. You see these little X's here, little vorts that are trying to make their way through the monsoon, so the monsoon flow goes this way. But as we head into the day on Wednesday, that flow becomes more westerly, and that's by Wednesday, why Wednesday and Thursday, we start to lose the monsoon here, although we will still see good monsoonal flow into Arizona and southern Utah, but we'll lose it here. Then as we head into the weekend, there's a low out in here, but it's also ridging in here. We could see some, some modest warming into the weekend. This is Saturday. You notice how we have a ridge here. That low gets kicked to the north, so we might get back to maybe the upper 90s. And then I'll tell you, next week, it turns into a very chaotic pattern. And the models are having a tough time with this. You have a, a cutoff a high up here, basically an omega block here. You have the high here, and then in between, it pinches off a cutoff low here. But the models are having a really tough time with the resolution of this, uh, figuring out where this cutoff low might be and what it may do. But that's what we're going to have to figure out for next week. So yeah, we don't know uh, a lot about next week at this point because the models are having a tough time, the, the long range models are having a tough time figuring out where that cutoff low may set, it, set up. So in the meantime, today, really interesting day uh, because of the, the cloud cover we have, still the moisture in the air, especially elevated, so we're going to have the elevated convection. The Sierra, yeah, same areas that have seen thunderstorms the last couple of days will again, but keep your eye on the sky around the middle part of the day, um, especially in those areas. I'd include Placer County in that, Sacramento County, El Dorado, Amador. We'll even toss in Calaveras County that we may even see some shower activity down to Highway 49 or even a little bit lower. And yeah, for those of you in Placerville and Camino and Georgetown, you may also hear a couple of rumbles of thunder. Like I said, interesting day. Get out and enjoy it. Stay safe. Make it a great day. I'll talk with you later.